Good morning. I too am that teacher that just started three weeks ago, so <laughs> rah rah, Saturday. <laughs> um, so when Kristen and Bayback asked me to look at uh, the curriculum and kind of update it and refresh it, because I've been doing Bayback curricula since 2004, and the ALU, I don't know how to say this nicely, kind of got tiresome and boring, and the bioinformatics was awful, and you know, I, but I kept doing it with my biotech class. So I teach biotech seniors two classes, and then I teach three freshman level biology classes. I have been in GSS trained for, this is my fourth year. I'm proud to say my district, which is San Lorenzo Unified, has been recognized by the state as a leader in GSS development, K, TK through 12. So part of that is because my husband is on the state NGSS rollout team. <laughs> <laughs> Was our TSA for science, secondary science for three years. So I really didn't have a choice. I, I was kind of forced into it. But I'm glad and I'm really proud of our district. And I think it's a great way to teach kids science. Um, I've been doing science for a long time. And this is the hardest work I've ever done. Because it's not me being on the stage telling and infusing my scientific wisdom with my students, like when I first started teaching, and handing out worksheets and doing the vocabulary and fill in the blanks and do the chapter reading and, and all that. That was the pedagogy I was taught when I came out of college. It's now engaging the kids. It's science for all students, all standards. That includes my EO kids, that includes my SPED kids, and that includes everyone across the board. So when we design science, uh, lessons in, in my school, which is Aurora High School. It, um, we work as a team. I did this, because of my training, I did this lesson this summer, and it took hours. It's, it, if you're doing any NGSS lesson, it's not something you can just whip up. It is really, really layered. You really have to think about it. You have to go back and revise it, and you really can't do it by yourself. So my approach is, I'm used to working with my biology team, um, but I don't have a biotech team. I am the biotech team. I'm the only one in my school who teaches biotech. So I looked at the lesson, I took my NGSS lens and went through the lesson, and of course, my husband said, what are you doing? <laughs> and I told him, and I said, could you look at it? Because he's another set of eyes. And he's really, really good at helping me see the way to tweak it even more. So I have to give him all credit too because a lot of this was some changes I did through having him work with me on this because I can't do it by myself. So I hope this turns out to be really a great lesson. I'm gonna run it with my kids this year in this format. So I'll give everyone Kristen feedback, and we always let teacher feedback because we all know as we design any lesson, we think it's gonna work. We think, oh, this is wonderful. They're gonna just love this. And then you get the, but, blah, blah. then they're waving hands at you like, no, I don't understand this. Wait, this isn't working, and things kind of blow up. They find all the little things because they're students. And ninth graders will see it differently than my biotech kids. My biotech kids tell me to get to ALU, I've already trained them on all the technique. They know how to micropipette. They know how to extract DNA. They know how to run gels. My freshmen, they're freshmen. <laughs> and that, I think, even though Michael was gracious to say this could be a five-day lesson, I will see. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They could be. <laughs> and we just might end it at five days. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I'm really excited to try it and put this in our genetics, our inheritance of traits unit. 
and um, connect it and have it as a, I see it as a link to evolution. So uh, we do evolution first, then we do inheritance of traits second, and that's our course curriculum in our biology class. So I think this would be a great tie into that. And so I am going to be brave, and I am going to do this with three of 36 each classes <laughs> of freshmen. And we'll see how it goes. I know. Light candles and say a prayer for me. I'm just talking about it now. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I'm going to see if I can also snag a couple of my biotech kids to come in and help. <laughs> that would help because I think I need more hands on deck. Anyway, um, so my approach to any of these lessons that I do um, is through my NGSS train filtered lens. But I would suggest if you're trying to revamp any of your curriculum and align it with NGSS um, state standards, that you really have to work with people. You can't do it in isolation. And, and the more eyes, the better. Um, the more ideas, the better. The more resources, the better. So. Um, if you have any questions about how I approach this, and I was telling uh, Michael, and I told Yang, uh, Yang Su this summer when we were talking, and, and Christina, because we would have conference calls, um, sometimes I do the lesson, I think, and I write it out, because I'm still old school, and I don't get on the computer until I'm ready to get on the computer, and I just jot things down. And then I wake up, sometimes in the middle of the night, and I think of something else, or when I'm sitting quiet and I go back, and like most all of us who've done this, you scribble it out and do something again and change it. But you really do have to have somebody to read through it and help you. Um, and the more eyes, the better, the more hands on deck, the better. And you really do need a team effort. So that's my approach to how this came about. Um, if you have any questions, I'm available at lunch. And I can answer probably most questions. I am pretty NGSSified, I think. <laughs> that we're still, we'll find out, we're still doing it. Um, and our, we're so efficient in my district. I was telling uh, my friends, Lada and Laura, that uh, we don't call it biology. It's called the living earth. And we changed all our course styles. It's our three year course, so living earth, chemistry, chem earth systems, and physics in the universe. So I even caught myself at the beginning of the year calling, oh, welcome to biology class. And it's because I've been doing it for 35 years. So, <laughs> And then I go, oh, no, no, we're in the living earth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the living earth. <laughs> and so, of course, my parents are totally confused. I just put AKA biology. But, um, and just so you know, if you're district is thinking of that. UC and CSU has adopted those title names. We got our names adopted. So they do recognize the NGSS uh, new names in the three course curriculum. So anyway, uh, I hope if you guys uh, do the LU, please give us feedback. I would love feedback. If you find something that works, doesn't work, you have better ideas, always looking for better ideas. Um, and I'm available at lunch if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you. Can we welcome our teachers um, up to the front? Uh, my name is David Frischer. I teach biotechnology uh, to your pathway like in high school, and I've been there for three years. Uh, there's a lot more to my story. I graduated from Lincoln in 2002, and I actually went through the program with George Kachianis, and so I kind of stayed in contact with him over, over the time and, and sort of brought some of his students into my lab space, and he kind of came to me to go into education, so I'm here. I'm Denise Kwan. I teach at Galileo High School in San Francisco. Um, I teach biology for newcomers and AP environmental sciences. I'm Elizabeth Doggett, and I teach biology at San Mateo High School, and also AVID, and I taught biotech there for a few years as well. And I'm Michelle Faith Burnt. I teach biology and biotechnology at San Marin High School in Novato. Um, before I became a teacher, I was a research scientist, 
and I'm super excited about NGSS with my background of being a scientist. And I started a biotech pathway at San Marin in 2008, which is now a four-year um, a four-year CTE college prep pathway. Great, thank you guys uh, for participating today. So our first question, uh, we heard uh, Debbie share about a little bit about the NGSS framework. Um, and if you ask a room full of teachers what NGSS means to them, you might get a whole lot of different answers. Um, Kristen told me recently that George uh, Kachianis um, shared with her, NGSS has finally caught up with the way we've been teaching biotech for 20 years. Um, so I'm wondering what that means for you all. In, in what ways um, have you seen this framework benefit your classroom? But honestly, what are some ways that um, challenge you as a teacher? Well, I guess I'll start since I have the microphone. <laughs> um, I think the main benefit um, in NGSSing um, for my students is the opportunity to think like a scientist, um, to ask questions, um, and to uh, kind of self-direct their own exploration and answering those questions. So we're really not focusing on learning a bunch of content. It's really more about thinking like a scientist and doing the things that scientists do. Because, you know, you can look up facts in books, but the only way that you can learn how to think like a scientist is to practice thinking like a scientist. So giving students the opportunity to do that, I think, has been the main difference. Yeah, so along with that, what I think of with NGSS is sort of the shift from students learning about a science concept to really figuring out why something happens in the world. So starting with some type of interesting phenomenon that students then have a motivation to figure out why, why is this thing happening. And so I think all the stuff that Babic has has been really helpful because instead of just a lab for the sake of doing a lab and doing interesting techniques, it's something that then helps the students explain this phenomena that they're trying to answer. Um, and so NGSS has really changed the way that uh, our students approach science in the classroom. And it is very student-centered and them answering the questions that they're coming up with um, and sequencing, as a teacher, the challenges and sequencing the lessons so that really helps students build a meaningful understanding of something. Um, but it, it creates this great context instead of just separate uh, concepts and topics, um, a context for why everything goes together in service of answering this broader question. So, um, One of the first things I remember when we were looking at the new NGSS curriculum um, was looking at the cellular respiration and photosynthesis chapter and looking at it and like, oh, there's no Kelvin cycle, there's no Krebs cycle. Like, we don't have to go over all the details of uh, these chemical reactions and I think one of the big shifts for me as a teacher was realizing like, okay, what's the broader, what are the broader things, what's important about teaching the students uh, about cellular respiration or photosynthesis? What is it, this real world context um, that we can give them? Um, and so it, it was a, a little bit of a struggle with some of the teachers in our, our school and our district um, to let go of this traditional, this traditional way of teaching um, and trying to bring students in into this, like, how is this really important to you? And I think that really opened up um, the topic for a lot of students and just making it more relevant to them and they're not getting, like, uh, dragged down by these details, but really showing them, like, why do we care? Why is this important? How does this, what does this have to do with your life? I think that was one of the big shifts for, for my class. Yeah, I follow up on a lot of the comments made. Um, for me, it's sort of us, as teachers, uh, again, being facilitators, providing a stage for students to ask their own questions and for those questions to generate all of the activity and action in the classroom. Um, rather than me saying, we're going to learn how to micropipette and here's why, it's here's this um, inter interesting idea or phenomena and then letting the students' questions and their desire to figure out how, why this thing occurs. Um, drive all of the skill development and all of the things that we are asking them to engage with from a content level and a skill level. So that goes from reading and writing. Um, I have my students really focus on what I call focused paragraph writing because you get such a wide uh, variability with students in terms of their ability to write um, from a critical standpoint using academic language. And so the NGSS has really sort of opened up that to us. It, it, there's obviously challenges with that because um, especially with the way that I try to set things up in the classroom, you don't often know exactly where students will take it. 
Uh, and so you kind of have to roll with that and, and, and trust that your expertise and the expertise that they'll develop uh, will be enough that you'll land in a spot that you feel is, is good enough. <clears throat> So I heard almost no challenges. Super easy. Oh, no, sorry, I gotta move on. Um, no. <laughs> Does anybody want to address that a little bit? Because it is challenging, right? Um, go ahead, Michelle. I do want to address that. I'm not sure if I need. Can you guys hear me back there? Yeah, no. No, okay. Um, I do want to address the challenges. Um, and I want to echo what Debbie said. It's um, planning an NGSS lesson is, you have to be very thoughtful. You're not going to get it right the first time. It's going to be messy, um, and it is really, really helpful to do it as a team. So that is a challenge when you are the only biotech teacher. Um, most of my experience at NGSSing is actually with my biology classes that I teach. Um, but the challenge is trying to do that in isolation and then having the time to be really thoughtful about it both while you're planning it and then as you're executing it and going back and kind of adjusting it as you're doing it. Can I add one more challenge? Sure. <laughs> so something that um, I always struggle with too is coming up, since it's all phenomenon based now, coming up with a really interesting phenomenon that students will connect with and actually be motivated to find out why it happens can be difficult too. Because as a teacher we might choose something to build all the lessons up towards, but all of a sudden you realize that phenomenon is not <laughs> like the kids don't care about it or um, also if you then change the phenomenon sometimes the way you approach the lessons that build up to it also change you can't just use the same thing again because if you're using a different focal context for your photosynthesis and respiration content then that also changes what the what the activities the kids are doing so that that can be really challenging to just framing everything okay I got a next question um, so oftentimes, bioscience and biotechnology uh, curriculum um, are siloed in classes like biotechnology or AP biology, um, but many of you are incorporating it into your biology classes. Um, and so we're wondering in what ways has that um, benefited your, your, your biology, biology classes um, and perhaps some challenges there as well. Uh, for me, uh, one of the first challenges is I don't have really any background in biotech. Um, it wasn't something I did when I was in high school. Um, it wasn't part of, I am a science major, but it wasn't anything. Like, I was an animal biology major, so I played with animals in college, and we didn't do a lot of the biotech stuff. Um, so that was a big challenge, so having Baybeck providing materials, and um, that was super helpful. Um, but kind of have, like, that's part of the reason why I would like to have Baybeck. I like having data coming into my classes is because since I didn't receive that when I was in high school, giving my students the opportunity um, to have that in the classroom, um, I think it's just something really special uh, for them. And um, I think also coming from the perspective, like uh, all my kids are EL students, and um, I also have kids with disrupted education, and so. Um, that's been a struggle as well. They don't have uh, what we expect, like maybe the general education classes. Um, they don't have that background, and so really being able to put this into perspective of, of real life relevancy, um, how can we uh, use, how is biotech relevant to the real world? Um, just, that's helpful. Um, so sorry. Kind of two things. Um, one, because the shift is, is kind of occurring in slow rollouts with some districts and school sites doing it uh, more efficiently than others, you, as a high school teacher, I see kids coming in with just a very wide variability in terms of their skills, also with what they um, have in terms of context to be able to do stuff with. And so learning to create um, experiences that um, allow students to kind of enter from wherever they are and then um, are, you know, come out at the very end with sort of a base level of understanding and practical knowledge um, can definitely be challenging. Um, I do think that NGSS does, I think, do a, hopefully a better job, but again, part of it is, is I don't know yet myself. Um, this is still something that I'm sort of working through. Um, but uh, it also does require on your part sort of a perceived level of, of expertise, like because you know, biotech is sort of a, a, an amalgamation of different sciences. You know, you, you can have some conceptual knowledge of physics and chemistry and microbiology. Um, 
you, if you're gonna do something that is sort of biotech-ish in a bio class, you have to keep that in mind um, where you may not really have those expertise, you know, kind of from your own background, you're gonna have to do more work. Just keep that in mind, you know. It's worth it though. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we have a tremendous community of educators here. Um, but once, and this was mentioned earlier today, once the school year gets started, I mean, it's nine months, it's start and you're in it until you look up nine months later. Um, and it can be pretty isolating sometimes. Um, so we're wondering, how do you stay connected to other teachers um, throughout the year? Thinking specifically about biosciences and biotech, do you have favorite resources, forums, or websites, or ways um, to do that? Curious. Um, yes, I, I'm really fortunate. I'm one of two teachers that does biotech at Lincoln. Um, I do the vast majority of the classes, but Julie Reese is uh, a colleague of mine, and she has been doing it for years. Uh, she actually worked with George uh, for many years, so I kind of kind of um, rely on her um, as a resource for just sort of the academic part of it, the curriculum part. Um, I did work myself at UCSF, and, and I've done work with Genentech in the past, and so kind of relying on different people that work in different um, areas um, has been very, very helpful. Um, I reached out to Damon Tahi, those of you who know him, he works with BioRed, um, and he and I go back and forth on how to develop stuff. We're working on a CRISPR set right now. Um, and again, having a partner has been very helpful. Uh, and then my other partner, who's much farther away, is George. So I, I text him all the time, and I kind of ask questions about things or kind of get his feedback. So just having that extra voice to sort of give me feedback on my ideas is real helpful. And the last thing is, I rely on students a lot. Um, I'm real fortunate that we do have a two-year pathway where I can ask the second-year kids, what did you think of the stuff from the first year? What would you do to improve it? So I constantly do that with my labs um, and other experiences where I'm trying to get feedback from them on um, challenges that they have with the material, both from a conceptual standpoint and a practical standpoint, and what they think we can do to improve. Uh, one thing, uh, I just checked in my, at my school, we do have a handful of biology teachers, but we're kind of all over the place, especially with my class with the EL students. I, um, I go a little slower than the other teachers at my school, um, but it's really making a commitment to whoever you're with, whether you're the same subject or not, making a, com a commitment to those teachers um, that we can, you can be vulnerable with each other to ask for help. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do. Um, it took us a oh, a couple years to get to that point where we could make this commitment to um, ask for help to reflect with each other and just to, to bring in, up the student work um, that we have um, and to, to get feedback from them. So even if maybe you are the only biotech teacher at your school, um, I think really just it's important to ask the other teachers that even if they're outside of your discipline um, to get feedback from them. I don't really have any teachers to reach out to to help me. I'm the, I have the only biotech program in our county. Um, so events like this are really the only time I get to network with other biotech teachers. But I do have the advantage of knowing a lot of scientists. And I reach out to them and I look at what they're doing for research and I ask them. Uh, I try and make lessons out of their research. I try and bring their research in to make what I'm teaching more relevant. Um, ask, ask them to come in as guest speakers, and also ask them to be mentors for my students. Uh, big, big thing for me is sort of uh, asking you shall receive. Uh, so the program at Lincoln has, has got sort of a, a, a reputation, I guess, not only in the Bay Area, but and beyond. Um, and I would just reach out to people that I knew, um, and sometimes they would reach out to me, and so being really open to just sort of taking suggestions. Um, this is sort of a shout out for a program, I thought, you know what, I'm really interested in CRISPR, I would like to do something with it. So I reached out to the Duda Lab and she actually emailed me back. Um, so just putting yourself out there and asking for help with just different organizations, um, because the Bay Area has thousands of nonprofits, other uh, organizations that are for profit or, you know, academic or private that will that will help you. And they'll, they'll just, you know, give you guys supplies if that's the type of thing you need, or any type of curricular or speaker support. <clears throat> Yeah, and I think, I mean, I'm, I'm curious as I'm thinking about what Baybeck's role can be in this, like whether you're the only teacher at your school or you're working with partners, you might be thinking, I, I don't have any partners to ask at my school about. 
I'm just thinking out loud about, well, in what ways can we help facilitate that? Because we're working with schools in San Francisco, in the North Bay, and the Peninsula, and the East Bay. Um, so um, not really a question there, but just a thought. And um, time for our last question, and then perhaps some questions from um, the audience. Um, so we heard John um, and Jeff this morning talking about equity and inclusion in our science classrooms. And you know, biotech can really bring hands-on and relevant learning to our, our students. Um, do you see this as a way to uh, diversify um, who we're reaching um, in our science classes? Um, and and what, what barriers might be in the way as well? Curious. So something that really stood out to me this morning, this idea of, of messaging and what is being messaged to students about who can do science and who is a scientist. And I think um, bringing biotech into like, ninth grade mainstream biology classes like mine or newcomer EL classes is so powerful to help message to students that they can like use this awesome equipment and look like scientists that they see in pictures and on TV. And it like it seems like a silly thing, but even just the kids get so excited when they use the micro pipette for the first time. And that right there is so powerful to help them connect to science and start building a scientific identity for themselves, even if they um, never take any more science after. At least at our school, they only need to take biology and then chemistry or physics, and that could be it for the rest of their life. And so, like having this opportunity to bring Baybeck Labs in at that level, I think is just essential to help help students really connect with science because even if they don't study it in the future they're all they're all going to be productive members of society and voting hopefully and making important decisions about their families and their health and their life and uh, science is a big part of being a successful person even if you don't become a scientist so yeah okay. um, when Babette came to my school last year, they had a guest speaker on Friday, and the guest speaker, uh, she was a grad student from UCSF, um, and she was of like Hispanic heritage, and in my EO class, the girls that were also Hispanic totally identified with her. It was so sweet, um, and I think they were just so excited that like, hey, there's someone that looks like me, someone that has a similar background. Like she didn't, she initially didn't really start out in sciences, but then she got interested in, in it later on. Um, and they were just asking so many questions, and these were girls that had not shown any interest in science before um, this guest speaker had come. And I think just really bringing in, um, having guest speakers come in uh, with a diverse background, um, and just, like I, I don't have grad school friends from UCSF or any of these other schools, so having Bayback really helped me find someone to bring to the classroom was great, and just, um, you never know which students will um, you know, vibe with the guest speakers. Uh, but that was just something that was really sweet and I think to me is just encouraging me to do this again with my students. Um, last year, Babette came in and did a, what we'll call a biotech week with a couple of the uh, biology courses uh, classes, teachers. Uh, John was one of the teachers that took part in this, and so all of the all of our bio sections took part in biotech week, which is sort of the week where they do a transformation. And um, I have a freshman advisory, it's our homeroom, and every kid came in that week and, that did it, and they were just completely like, oh my god, I can't wait to take this class. Um, and kids of every color, girls and boys. Um, and it was really exciting to see that. And the thing that sort of made me upset was not every kid got to do it. Some of the teachers didn't want to take part. And so some of the kids that didn't take part came in and be saying, well, why didn't we get to do it? Um, and it was, you know, talk to your teacher, like try to put the best effort on them. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know, getting the kids really early, like as early as ninth grade or earlier, um, get, exposing them to experiences like this where they can um, see the content, see the skills, find some measure of success within it and feel like I can do this is very, very important. Um, and, you know, I, for those of you that do, you know, lower, like ninth grade, tenth grade, even if it's not necessarily like a biological science, it's getting um, speakers of, of different ethnicities, genders is, is wonderful. Um, I've been really fortunate to be able to get people to come into my classroom, men, women. Um, we had, I was really fortunate, one of the researchers that came into my classroom last year is a trans, uh, transgender woman. And so to bring that into the classroom and, and you know, having some of the students really identify was very powerful for me. Because they, they, they basically walked out, one of them was in tears, just thinking, oh my god, like, I never knew that I would see this. So um, just you know, giving students uh, the opportunities to 
see these types of things and engage with them one-on-one -on -one is maybe very important. Is this, do you have something to say or you have to go to the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or both. Just one, the common theme I have heard is intentionality in recruiting guest speakers. Um, so one thing that hasn't been mentioned though is in recruitment. So um, we try very actively to recruit students that are typically underrepresented in biotech field and one of the things that we do is we go into our avid classes and try and recruit them. Um, so intentionality, whether it's inviting guest speakers or science spotlights or anything like that, even down to recruitment, um, are all really important things to do to uh, diversify the program and include, include all students. Yeah, it's a really good point. When the first year I taught my biotech class, it wasn't representative of the student body I was at. And with recruitment, all I did was I invited kids. In my biology class, hey, you know, you did a great job on this lab. You should think about taking biotech. That intentionality of you actually belong here, you should do this, because um, it's super powerful. So um, we're running a little short on time, so I think we're probably going to pause on questions um, so we could get to our lab experiences. But all these folks will be um, here. Um, of course, we will as well. Um, could we, before we scoot off, can we give our panelists a big round of applause this Saturday? <laughs>